We have a northern coronal hole that is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone and possibly bringing us some activity. And two bright regions on the Earth-facing sun are boosting solar flux and firing mini solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely calming down a little bit. Last week we got hit by some fast wind from a coronal hole that brought us up to storm levels for a short while and did bring us some aurora. But since then we've been dealing with kind of a remnant coronal hole. It's brought us some pockets of fast wind and kept us pretty much at unsettled conditions. And now it's pretty much a waiting game. We have a northern coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. And if it looks familiar, yes it is. We've seen this one. Last month it hit us and it did bring us up to storm levels from the fast wind from it. This month it's not looking quite as wide and it's not coming quite as far down in latitude. So we're not necessarily expecting all that much from it. Probably some activity, maybe storm levels, especially if one of these eruptions that I've seen up there actually precedes it. So it's kind of hard to say, but we are getting little mini solar storms. We've got two bright regions on the Earth facing disk that have been boosting the solar flux. And if you watch them, they're also firing little mini solar storms. So it's interesting the activity we're seeing. These ones aren't earth directed, but we will wait for that uh, fast wind from that coronal hole to hit us and we could get some more aurora. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see we're still incredibly low when it comes to the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux is still low. We're well below the B floor when it comes to uh, X-ray flux and when those two regions rotated onto the earth facing disk, we did manage to pop a few small flares starting around the 12th and that's actually when we were firing a couple of the mini solar storms as well. But this activity has managed to keep us into the marginal range for radio propagation. We hope the activity continues so that these regions remain bright enough to give us enough solar flux to keep us up. Meanwhile, we're probably going to last maybe the next three days or so, maybe a little bit longer before things begin to tank a little bit and we'll drop back down into poor radio propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we actually hit some storm levels back on the 7th. This was due to a coronal hole, a big one, that we had seen the month before. And that time it had actually brought us to G2 levels. Well, this month we didn't quite make it to G2 levels, but we did get some decent storming that brought us aurora in many parts of the world. And then after that, it just didn't settle down as we expected, and it kept us at active conditions for days upon days. It even popped us up to storm conditions again right around October 11th before things finally began to settle down. And then after that we bumped back up to storm conditions again from another coronal hole which was much smaller which last time we talked about wasn't going to last quite as long and that's what happened. And then things have settled down and that's kind of where we are now. We're kind of in a waiting game for this next coronal hole to rotate into the earth strike zone and we could easily start seeing storm conditions or at least active conditions starting around the 9th. And over the past couple weeks, we've gotten some amazing aurora over many parts of the world. And I can't possibly show you all of the shots that I've gotten, but I've put some extra links in the description of the video so that you can take a look at them yourselves. So let's get started. We've got some gorgeous aurora with a reindeer in Norway. An aurora was seen in Finland. It was seen in Estonia. And it was seen in multiple places in Sweden. We saw it in Denmark, and it was all over Scotland. I got more photos from Scotland than I think anywhere else, strangely enough. And it's been seen in Ireland, and it was seen all over the UK. We've got shots from Shetland and from Norfolk. It was seen in Yorkshire, and it was seen in Northumberland. And as we travel over the Atlantic, it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we go to the Western Hemisphere, it was all over Alberta. In fact, we had multiple field reporters basically at the same location. They didn't even know it, but they both shot the same bridge. <laughs> and then as we go down under, we saw it in multiple places in Tasmania and also in New Zealand. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you immediately see are the bright regions that are on the west side of the sun in stereo's view. Those are the two regions that have now rotated into Earth view, and you can see they're firing off little mini solar storms and flares. And that activity is what has boosted the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. So we're hoping that this will continue and it'll keep that uh, radio propagation in a marginal range for everybody who's responding to Hurricane Michael and the devastation there. Now, meanwhile, we also see a few eruptions on the sun's east limb from Stereo's view, and that's associated with this coronal hole. There's some activity there. We're not exactly sure what's going on. So we're going to be watching that to see if that is sputtered out or if there might be something brewing on the backside. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind from that northern coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. And luckily, this is not our first dance with this coronal hole because it hit us last month as well. So we have an idea of what to expect. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with about a 55% chance of a major storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions this time with about a 20% chance of a minor storm. But there is what looks to be a stealthy solar storm or reasonably stealthy solar storm launching from that region right now, which could enhance these effects and it could actually cause the storm to hit a little bit earlier than anticipated. But expect something by the 19th, uh, maybe a little bit earlier if this stealthy solar storm actually does uh, enhance the effects and really does turn out to be a, a true eruption. Now, on top of that, we would expect expect that these conditions will last easily through the next day, maybe even through the entire weekend before things settle down, because we are still pretty close to the fall equinox, and that in of itself helps to enhance effects. So expect if you're an amateur radio operator, you might have a little bit of a bumpy weekend, but if you're an aurora photographer, make sure you keep your batteries charged. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We do have two bright regions on the Earth-facing sun right now, but neither of these are M-flare players, so no, we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users quite happy. Now, these regions are keeping the solar flux into the low 70s, and that should make you amateur radio operators and emergency responders quite happy as well, especially the first response responders to Hurricane Michael, because this means that radio propagation is hanging on barely to the marginal levels. And this will continue easily over the next few days, possibly over the next uh, five days, before things begin to tank a bit on the Earth's day side. Now, the night side might not be so happy with these solar storms, but the day side, you should be pretty good. Now, also because we are so close to solar minimum, we are dealing with a higher penetration of cosmic rays than we normally would. So this means you frequent flyers, and that includes the air crew that fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are now in marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So space weather this week is a bit of a waiting game. We're anticipating the hit from some fast wind from a northern coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here in the next couple days. And it should bring us some storming, probably starting the early part of the weekend, and it could last through the weekend. Now, we know we should be reaching active conditions because we've done the dance with this one before, but we might even bump up to storm levels, which could bring us aurora down to mid-latitudes, at least for a short while. So your aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged. Now, amateur radio and shortwave radio operators, we should be very happy because we do have two bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. They're actually firing off little mini solar storms, which is keeping us scientists kind of got our eyes on it. But it's also bumping the solar flux up back into the 70s, which means we have marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. So you guys should have some decent propagation and some decent communications, at least on the day side, even when things get a little bit dicey on the night side during that solar storm this weekend.
Now, GPS operators, well, you guys should be liking life pretty much. Yeah, it's, things aren't too bad. There's no radio blackouts. Earth's day side looks pretty good for you. And as long as you stay away from the Dawn Dust Terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.